at the time in my life, I was 22, 23 years old. And at the time I was, I did not believe in God. Like God had no role in my life, right? There, there might've been a God, maybe not, it's none of my business, right? Um, and yet when I decided that I was going to stop doing meth and drinking all that, I mean, we were doing meth and mushrooms and, and, and ecstasy. It's like when ecstasy was really big and I would do like three, four ecstasy, ecstasy pills at night. And I don't think I was trying to kill myself, but I didn't care if I did. You know, I just wanted to not hate myself for, for a couple hours, you know, but I, I woke up and I was like, you know, in my, in my house and I was like, I, I I'm going to die here. And I don't, I don't want to die among these people. I, I want to live my life. And I never did crystal meth again. I never did a single drug ever again, never fiend for one and never craved one. And I believe that God took away my addiction for his own reasons and his own purposes, you know, perhaps to bring me here today. Um, at the time I was just like, Oh, I guess quitting drugs is not hard. You know what I mean? I didn't have any idea, but so, so you ask like, but the resiliency, the resiliency came from being judged by wealthy Orange County kids who didn't see any need for me. And for the, 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 I mean, these, these people, these peers are my peers now from different, you know, not, not my high school peers, but you know, like, the same, they're my same age group. They're now my bosses at these jobs. They're the supervisors. I remember once as I was just trying to get my life together, I got a job at Tilly's because like, I need some new clothes. I need some clothes that aren't like drug clothes. And, and uh, I worked at Tilly's to get the discount. And I was like 21, 22, but all the girls there, the manager like 17, 18. And they treated me like garbage. They treated me so bad. They snarled at me. They wouldn't help me. They wouldn't talk to me. They would gossip about me. And the resiliency came from that, from, from knowing deep inside that they had no idea who they were dealing with and that they ended up here after having cushy, wealthy Orange County lives. Whereas I'm starting out here. So that resiliency is necessary on YouTube because you're gonna put your heart and soul into a video that no one's gonna like, you know? And you're gonna get platitudes from your friends. No, yeah, it was good. What'd you think about the part with the alien? Oh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't watch it that part. And this is a video you put your heart and soul into. So you have to, you know, really understand that you're like who you are and why you're doing this. Are you doing this so that Jonathan likes your special effect? Or are you doing this to show the world that you came to play? Are you doing this to share your art? Because look, I'm an artist. I want my art to touch people and to affect people. But when I get 10,000 views on a video, I know that that video only touched very few of them. But 9,997 of them, they just wanted to get some quick tips so they can make some more money. But there might have been three people whose lives were changed because they, they took it seriously or because they were watching with intent. So when I make a video, I try to think about that person. And is this video really helpful to that person? Or am I just trying to show off for someone who doesn't really care? I'm gonna go, 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 go,